Oh, right. <laughs> After that. Um, yeah, I, uh, as I said before, I started, a, I didn't start straight from school in the mining industry. I started a joint, apprentice joiner and worked my way up to joiner. Worked for myself for about seven years. And then the construction industry just went downhill. And in 1980, I applied for a job at Coalboard and it was successful. We were set in on at that moment. And I, I the same, I went through the uh, training for, at Bold Over Colliery in the Grassmore Training Centre and did my basic training and then started at Whitwell. And uh, Whitwell, I went on, as, as you do, you start on general knowledge, uh, work your way through, you know, get new to the pit. And uh, from then they asked me if I would, uh, wanted to train as a, a a road, a road layer, right, laying the tracks for the, for the trams, and the, uh, and I said yes, I'll, I'll have a go at that, and work my way up. And at that time, people, the older people that were in the miners, were taking early retirement, or they were finishing in about sixty or so. Yeah. And within six weeks of being in the road layer, now <laughs> I was head, head road layer, <laughs> but no, <laughs> and I didn't know where I were. <laughs> And uh, went from there, and uh, then uh, a few weeks after that, we had an influx of men from other collieries what were closing down, and uh, a road layer came in and took over the right main line. And I, in the meantime, I was I were asked if I wanted to go to college as uh, and train as a uh, air measurer, uh, working for the in the safety department for a ventilation officer. And I said yes, and I would go. So I went to. Uh, works at college, and a year there and did me hair measuring certificate. But as it, as just as I'd passed me hair measuring, the big strike started. So that was put on hold for a year. <laughs> I were all on strike, and uh, I came back and started as an hair measurer at the at the colliery. Um, uh, worked my way up. And I went in the up in the September. Started at Trent Polytech, which were then, which is Nottingham Trent University now. Uh, that was a doing me uh, ventilation officer certificate. Um, and in the meantime, the uh, a job came up at time or call it as assistant safety officer, fire officer, and I applied, and it was successful. So within six months of the strike. Finishing, I left and went time on collar as assistant safety officer, fire officer, and there again, within six months, I was thrown in at the deep end as a ventilation officer. As the ventilation officer had a heart attack, unfortunately, and took early retirement. So I would say was here in there, thrown in at the deep end. Uh, didn't know the collar very well, and it was one of those you got to. Well, it's your job now, but you'll, you'll get on with it, like. And what we had to do as well with IMO, with it being a drift mine, and it was experimenting at that time with these free steered vehicles, FSVs, all diesel powered. Everything went in from the surface, down the drift, back to face, all the face machinery. Uh, it was one of these experimental pits as well. It was supposed to be American mining system. Or they're just starting it. With no, we were starting with no steel. It was all roof bolts, and we were just experimenting with that. So I had all that to, to, uh, to contend with. The FSVs, the, these were new in the pits as well. And I, I did a project with the mining inspectorate uh, with the CO monitors, uh, uh, monitoring the carbon monoxide diesel fumes in, in the uh, returns uh, with a new Andel monitor which had just been invented at Bretby Scientific Department and it got to be approved so we, we did that for six months and we were working with the Mines Inspectorate as well as doing the <laughs> ventilation for all, for all the gallery and uh, then after a certain period <coughs> the areas Started disappearing, North Derbyshire area and South Yorkshire. I'm all 
put into South Yorkshire area and we uh, we'd started a drift uh, a, a development joining two, the two collieries together and I, I, I have to oversee the breaking through from one colour to the other and do all the ventilation calculations and what would happen when we broke through, which way were the air going to go and uh, all that, uh, all technical uh, in measurements and um, and that's uh, basically I finished up as a ventilation engineer for both, both collieries and I had to oversee Westhorpe when that closed, I say I'm more when that closed uh, I had to look after co a little uh, chap with a combo wood pit. I had to do and look after that and make sure that were all right. And uh, I was there until uh, Kiverton closed. Um, they did ask me to go to Rick Hall, as a ventilation engineer up at Rick Hall in the Selby area. And after some consideration, I decided not to. I didn't want to move up there. And, uh, and that was basically there. Uh, I finished at, at Kiverton Colliery. But coming back to incidents, I was uh, involved in an incident at Imore. Um, I finished as incident controller because the manager were off, the under manager were on a course, and the deputy manager was somewhere else. And we had uh, a roof fall in one of the uh, uh, retreat base of what we were just developing. And uh, we'd got ten. Well, there should be should have been an nine man heading, but there were ten men in. Uh, we're all trapped, which we were on on the TV and everything. That the, the, the major incident, and I finished with the incident controller for that until uh, the senior mines inspector and senior management came from the group. And uh, it it turned out all right eventually. Like everybody got out all right, but I had to do all the calculations to see how what. Uh, within the development, how long it did last with nine men in, uh, and work all these figures out uh, until the area ventilation scheme came, which was then were at Alton Bywater, which was quite a way away. Um, but by the time they'd all got there, we'd, we'd, we'd all sorted it out, and uh, I said for the mines rescue, uh, one of the first things I did because it was a, a, a big good fall, I told them to bring the what they had a, a, a little machine, what we call a mole, what would go through and provide a ventilation uh, route for for everybody, so you could get ventilation to head in until we could get people out, and that was the only major incident. I had quite a few incidents where there's been gas in the in the uh, atmosphere, and I've had to pull people out. That one, when you just I have to put in, it was Dave's first week, and high more with. I'd taken over the project when I'd started there. They'd got this big capital project and fourth drift. And it was the first time one had been developed where everything had been driven in, even the heading machine, which was called a Titan. And it was going to be driven out. Because normally in an ordinary pit they have to be dismantled and brought up the shaft, but because it was so um, there was the T V cameras going to be there to watch this magnificent machine, huge thing, come out, it was just like Thunderbirds are go, you know, we'd got it all planned, it would be driven out. Dave's first week, I'm there, I was one of the first to be at the colliery in the office staff, for getting the tonnage figures out for when the manager came, and I picked up this vibe out the deployment centre, something was wrong, and the cameras were going to be there for 11 o'clock and this is quarter past seven. Something was wrong with this drift and this Titan. And I hung about hanging the ear on, on a quick, you know, and I realized, so I phoned Dave and I said, get yourself organized, there's something wrong with that drift. They can't get the machine out. Over to Dave, I give him the warning and the thing was something that they'd measured wrong somewhere couldn't get the machine yeah. out. Well, the machine was driven in with no air door on. There's a date for, for this, have you a date for this? A, a date for your previous uh, when you were uh, telling us about well, the... We would, we would be able to 
look it up probably for you and let you know that you know just off the top of it it <laughs> well, was the, yeah, that they'd driven, first week they driven the machine in when yeah. they started the the new drift they'd done the, all the all the pit top all the concrete wheels and all the doors and everything like that and they'd driven this machine in gone through no problem um, done the drift broke through put the air doors on to stop the return air from going out, right? You know, I mean, massive big hydraulic doors, you know, about this thick, you know, about 10 ton, of, 10 ton each door on big hydraulic arms. State of the art thing, you know. Got to the top of the drill drift coming out, it's not allowed for the doors. Doors with that for ten mi six, six inch thick doors, you see, so you got a foot a foot less. <laughs> so we had to come to a quick uh, decision why we we're gonna get this machine out. So we had to dismantle the first set of doors, drive the machine into the airlock, put the doors back on, take the next set of doors in, drive it into the next airlock, put the doors on, and then take the outside door up and drive it through. We just drove it through. As the cameras were. Uh, the cameras. Got, it, look, it, look <laughs> it looked good, good but if the, anybody to realise what panic were. <laughs> panic well, stage. Finally on the television. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that well, was when it. Um, uh, they started to use diesel engine machines uh, in the pit, did they have to increase the volume of air yes. going around to yeah. get yeah. rid to, of to, the to dial up the fuel? The fuel. Uh, yeah. Fumes. Um, <coughs> we used to. We do, when we were doing these uh, tests, what we were, we did it with, I mean, there was, I think there was something like 20 of these FSVs, small one, massive big one. And uh, we did it, there were no, never going to be, uh, be more than s uh, six or eight in the mine at the same time. Because there'd, so, there'd always be so many out on being repaired or being loaded up, you know. Now, as one came out, one of them went, they'd go in. And we had to do the test, the main return, with all six diesel engines, or diesel FSVs, at full revs, on full load, coming up the return drift, to see what particles and CO was in, in the atmosphere. And, and then we had to work out what, what the maximum air we needed, and yes. we worked out from there. And we, with IMO, we had a, an adjustable, a fan, what we could adjust the blades as we went on to make so we didn't. We, he, it's no use producing too much air because it's only a waste of energy. So you had to we, we could adjust the blades to increase the airflow, and which well, that was another state of the art uh, machine what had gone into it. You know. Mm. So we, and was the ventilation system the same as in the deep mine where they pulled the air out yeah, of one yeah, shaft? Yeah, and yeah. Well, we, we, well, I'm all we've got uh, four. Well, we, when there's new drift, we've got four drifts. So you've got two intake and two return, basically. Mm. You know, and, uh, and mm. that's why you used to go in round and back out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I um, go on a little bit more um, <coughs> to ask if you were? Uh, a member of the union, and can you remember the anything about the miners' strike? Um. Yep, I was a, a member of the uh, of COSA, which you know the office staff uh, linked into. Can, it. can you tell us what COSA means? Uh, clerical Officer. officers, Stop. staff Stop. association. Stop. That's right. I have to just have a, yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, sort of, you were we were affiliated to the NUN. Um, I, ha I was on strike three times uh, during all the strikes and the last, I mean the first two strikes were not, um, should I say too bad because I was at the area offices. I didn't, I, I was on strike, didn't work, but at that time it wasn't too bad because I mean this is sort of where you can say Dave and myself were linked in into because Dave was self-employed working out of the industry just before they mm. weren't it. Yeah, yeah. Now the last strike which was for the year well we were both at High Moor um, and as, as I said it's um, home of the Mafia they were very very militant so there was absolutely no way we could 
not we could not strike and then expect to go back to that pit in that sense. Nobody worked at home, or nobody. Um, and it was very difficult because we didn't get any money from anywhere because we were deemed that um, we should have gone into work. You know, so we had a year with, we had to live for a year, pay all the bills and everything on what we could. Um, and we managed, and it, to be honest, it, it was one of the best years we had. We, we, it's amazing how inventive you can be yeah. on making the best of what you've got, you know. Mm. Um, and the thing was, we, we both, because I'm of a mining family anyway, and we, we both thought about it long and hard, and we thought, well, to be able, it was a question of saying, what do, which way do we want to go? What do we want to do? However long this lasts, and nobody knew how long it had last, did, what did we want to do when it had happened? Did we want to have a good job working with people that we knew and liked and carry on our life as it had been? Or did we just steam in and know that we'd have to possibly leave and be, you know, because it, it was such a militant colliery. Mm -hmm. And we decided we, we'd stand with them, stand shoulder to shoulder with them, and, and that was it, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And when we went back, um, I think the uh, feeling we got, I mean, it didn't just affect us, it was all the staff and that, was one of support from the men. They, they kind of respected the fact that we'd, we'd stood with them somewhat. And, and was your experience similar or different? I was different uh, to Margaret mm -hmm. in the fact that... Yeah. I was always on uh, BACM uh, Union, which is British Association of Corrie Management, right from day one, since I was 16. It was a voluntary uh, joining, you might say, so sooner than the NUM, which was a closed shop and you must join it. So we were never affiliated to NUM or COSA or any of that kind of uh, union. So during the strike periods, I had signed a uh, paper when I first started that I would never go on strike. That was part of our job, British Association of Management. So during those periods, the first time I was asked, would I do the winding, being a so-called intelligent staff, as you might say, as a, it might be a different way of putting it. Uh, I did every job barring. Uh, I was underground doing pumping operations, measuring ventilation mm -hmm. uh, fans, uh, particularly um, the uh, booster fans of which needed half hour regular uh, readings on the uh, uh, revs and uh, the amount of gas that may be passing by. We had an underground heating so I was jack of all trades uh, and this this went through right through uh, all the other strikes as well. So I was made for my sins the uh, roster man. So I said to the manager, thank you very much. I says, that's wonderful. I says, you try getting somebody here on a Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, or New Year's Day, or some other Sunday afternoon. He said, well, I knew you could sort it out. I said, yes, thank you. I was here on my own sometimes. You would not believe some of the excuses that I got off of staff from Edwinstow headquarters, etc. Oh, if you'd have only told me before. My grandma's toenails weren't cut in that <laughs> night. Yeah. Such silly excuses yeah. I got. It was unbelievable. I worked on boilers, security, control centre, underground deputy in work, because I got my deputy certificate, as it so happened. Uh, I was on methane pumps, ventilation, uh, taking samples. On the surface I worked inside a boiler, helping an engineer to mend the uh, movable um, um, chain that's supposedly automatic. 
I was on tips, I was on the recall prep plant, I was uh, doing uh, compressors, I was on setter, I was banksman, I did every job, oh and main fan, and in the, and in the lamp room, uh, cleaning lamps and taking them to pieces and putting them back together, which is a very responsible job. And you were frightened whether you're doing it right or wrong. Let's face it, I was playing at it. We were doing five, six jobs a day, only partly. But this was the downfall of the NUM. They could not see that they had shot themselves in the foot. Because when they came back to work, we were saying, he's only doing that job all day. It's a job that somebody else can do as well as he can do another job as well. So they chopped the staff mm. down straight away and cut them in half virtually. Mm. That was their fault. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Not, not our fault. Yeah. Another part of my tasks, although it comes away from the um, strikes and that, was uh, measuring up dead bodies. Uh, I've been in one explosion, which was in 1957 at Sutton Quarry, when five men were killed, two outright, and three died in hospital, and we measured up the aftermath. Uh, we were down the pit, just following the, uh, we were straight away after the rescue team had come out with a couple of canaries and an oil lamp hanging up just to see, and we got a huge fall, some six metres high, and there was 20% of gas up there. But this fall brought down the mi magic mixture between five and 15% of which it's 9.4 percent is the explosive maximum range you could get and it blew the lot to pieces uh, and we were frightened but the most frightening part oh and of course every accident at the mine i was sent for if it was a serious one and i think over my period i had 12 deaths and about 80 odd incidents and accidents and then uh, the worst thing i ever saw was a heating on a coal face that was glowing red just like a fire. Very frightening. Should the ventilation air have changed, it could have gone very nasty. I had to escort the deputy director down the pollution manager from my scenes and make sure we got we got uh, man riders working at spot on times and all this business and filling the book full of gibberish that they were saying and then eventually the direct the deputy director says right put a stopping on and I thought thank goodness for that because although I didn't want the mine to close it was going to be a three and a half mile development further on it was three and a half miles up pit bottom before we started so it was great from that aspect but uh, that was one of the worst points of the job you might say but uh, Dealing with all departments, as uh, uh, they would tell you, we dealt with everybody at the mine, and usually everybody dealt with me. I used to love it when they used to come running into the office, engineers, we've got a problem. They said, oh, we've got a big problem. I said, yeah, man. We have, we've got a big problem. I said, no, you just put it on my table. Yes. I said, why did you come in here in the first place? Wanted yeah. me to solve it. Yeah. Generally, of course, most surveyors can solve any 